Hi guys and welcome back to Koi Fish Johnny. Just in case you hear my little disciple following me, he will not leave me alone. He's literally following me everywhere at the minute. I can't get a chance to do anything without him just being literally that close. In fact, as I said that, he's left me. Today, I did say in my last episode I was going to treat the pond again uh, with the magic NT Labs Magiclay, but to be honest, the water has improved significantly since then on its own because it's obviously still in the system for the seven days. That's why you have to wait seven days to treat it. So if we just come here now, we can see the bubbles there. You can really see, I can see when I'm looking down into the pond, I can see um, the corners of the pond, so little grooves, you know, like so nothing gets stuck in the corners that were put in with the insulation boards and then fiberglass around to create that nice smooth bottom. Uh, which sounds incredibly wrong as I say that but nonetheless that's what it is a nice smooth bottom so it all heads down to the four inch drain at the bottom but I have got a little bit of bad news on top of that which I'll get round to in a minute which is why I'm gonna have to have a massive change of direction but first of all I'll just show you the clarity of the pond so as you can see here across the top because um, I because my ponds are only narrow so we've got the aeration coming there and if you look at the top surface let me just poke you around this there. You can see there, the top surface has got like a, it's not been skimmed correctly due to the fact the pond is so narrow. And even though we've got the vortex whipping around, the air is pushing and keeping and maintaining like a circular surface area here, uh, which doesn't look great. But every now and again, they'll just turn my bubbles on the aeration right down so that can clear but from the top down we can see the fish quite clearly so if i want to find one particular fish i'll be able to find them at the minute but i know that the reflection is going to get in the way of that as we as we're filming right now so i can come down here and see the there's foz in fact i'm going to talk about that for a second so on a couple of videos ago uh, two of my fish were named Foz and Fate and we couldn't decide which one was which but I finally decided and the reason I decided was Foz, like Fozzy Bear in um, the cartoon thing, I can't remember it now off the top of, off the top of mine uh, um, the old fashioned cartoon thing with Fozzy Bear, he's yellow so Foz, the Yamabuki Ogon so this is Foz, I'll just crop him in now and Fate uh, is the Gimring Kahaku so I'll just crop him in now. Both doing really well, them two fish. Absolutely amazing, they spend a lot of time together. Um, but yeah, back to the water clarity. So if we just pop it over the top there, and you can see quite easily down, right down to the bottom. If I whip you down there, you can see all the fish, if I just use my hand as I, as I spook them, you can see all the fish right down. It's not absolutely perfect, but it is definitely, definitely good enough. But see that shusui there? The shusui is the reason for the change in direction because I did notice him yesterday flashing. So I went to get, oh, two days ago. So I went to get my microscope, knocked that off the side, smashed it. So I've ordered a new one, but I didn't want to spend much. This is the new microscope I've ordered, okay? So it isn't the most expensive microscope. It's like 15 to 20 quid, I think, I can't remember, uh, off Amazon. It claims to do up to a thousand man magnific magnification, if I'm actually pronouncing that right, it doesn't sound right. So we should be able to see everything we need to see on this, because like I say, seeing him flashing the other day, the, the Shusui, blue is called, um, I wasn't very impressed because I've not seen them flashing at all. Because the pond is so rounded inside and quite smooth, like I say at the bottom, it's got the grooves, so it's got a nice smooth bottom. Uh, again, sounds incorrect, but it is correct in this case. The only place that is like little tiny ledges that they can sort of bounce themselves off if they want to itch is literally either the, the aeration part of the bottom drain that sits on the top or the windows, just inside the windows, because it steps back like about, about an inch back. It's got like a ledge like that like just imagine the wall it comes straight straight up like that and it comes in a little bit and back up so that creates a little bit of a spike it's rounded off but a little bit of a spike and that's where the shoe was last night 
smacking himself off about three or four times. So I wanted, uh, basically, I want to do a scrape. Obviously, I'm looking after the kids at the minute, um, who miraculously has just decided to abandon me, despite me introducing him as being my little disciple that follows me everywhere. So I'm gonna do the scrape over the next day uh, over the next few days when I get a little moment to myself and I can dedicate a little bit of time to just checking out the fish. Now I'm hoping it's not anything serious, I'm hoping that there's no uh, parasites in the pond but the likelihood is seeing him flick like that, there's probably something there or he's just got a random itch for once and decided that he'd itch it right there and spooked the hell out of me. But either way, we're going to be checking out this little microscope because <clears throat> in all honesty the microscopes are quite quite expensive in this hobby there's so much that you need to buy uh, so if I can get this to work for me this little 15 to 20 pound microscope when I uh, plug it into my Mac upstairs I'll be able to see it on my on my monitor and really go round now I've seen I've seen a few little tips out there about putting a little bit of water on top of the slime that you pull off the fish pull off the koi just to allow the parasites to move around when, when they're in between the little glass slides so you'll be able to see in so then the, the little parasites can wiggle around so then you can identify them or in this case me can identify them a little bit easier so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to pull the shoe suit out in a couple of days i'm not going to video it because i am not the best at doing the scrapes so the last thing i need is the pressure of having to set up a camera, get it all in place, do that. It will just make me a little bit too nervous. I will do a scrape video in the future once I've built up my confidence doing the scrapes and also with the uh, filming of the scrapes. Because obviously handling the fish, um, recording the fish, doing something like that that could damage the fish in a small bowl, I just want to give the, the koi my dedicated 100% focus in that moment. I'm going to use like my old Costco card, which is quite quite uh, flexible I'm not going to use any glass I'm just going to use a Costco card because it's a little bit giving scrape down the fish uh, one thing to note is he is a Deutz Deutz Shusui I think they're all Deutz meaning he's uh, the Shusui is scaleless it should just slide gently down the body and I know I did whether this is right or whether this is wrong it's just something that I've watched in another video the Deutz variety are generally, generally a little bit more resistant to parasites due to the fact that they don't have any scales so i'm hoping really hoping but you know really hoping that it's just a one-off he just had a little flick and he was a bit like just feeling a bit under the weather so i'll let you i'll let you know how that goes on in my next episode so now you know who fuzz is you know who fate is you know we're not treating the you know the mt labs magically as works wonders on the pond and allow me to see right down to the bottom of the pond which actually um, in all honesty, my son had sneakily thrown this in, this little net, you can see it there, some of the dirt had built up, built up on it. My son, while I wasn't watching, has obviously just decided to lob that in, and because it sinks and the bottom drain's there, it's just got sucked and stuck in the bottom drain, so that has been, I don't know how long it's been in there, because this green, green pond, syn the green pond syndrome thing that I was in the middle of has been going on that long, it could have been in there for quite a while. But anyway, another great reason as to why you need good pond clarity is to see down to inspect the bottom of your pond. Um, and like I say, the pond is beautiful. I am literally enjoying the fish so much. It's like it's like it's like being back to uh, to the beginning again, where you can, I, can, I can come out here. This is my little spot that I chill out. I just have a brew, a little slurp of the brew there. No fancy koi cups, just my boss cup and i stand here and i love the top down view of watching the fish here obviously they're all quite low at the minute because i'm doing this video today which is saturday um i'm looking forward to watching england later on on that note guys i'm going to call it a day on this video and that's just to let you know where i'm at what's going on and how i'm going to be proceeding over the next few days so please take care please like and subscribe if you can it's really appreciated i mean i'm on 700 and odd now uh, subscribers which is mind-blowing it's a dream to even think about getting to a thousand when i started this i was buzzing when i had 78 subscribers so to nearly be 10 times that is just magnificent and every, thank you so much to every single person that does hit that subscribe button it is super appreciated and thank you for taking the time out to watch koi fish johnny um, i'm going to close on having a little look at my bubbles there the aeration 
I'm going to sit down here now, chill out for a second, watch me bubbles, watch me koi, and enjoy the rest of my Saturday. Take care, guys.